worried about you. We were worried about you. I was worried about me too. Traffic, traffic uh, not so good, probably. Yeah, uh, the driver's not so good. Oh. <laughs> we could get on some whole discussion about it. Yeah. So, good. I mean, obviously, there's a bit of a vote of confidence in you getting that, uh, getting that extension. I mean, how, how does this feel from a personal level, and how, how does it help you maybe professionally just selling your long-term vision? Well, it's you know it's it's the next step for us. You know, obviously we want to want to try to you know work to to build a foundation, and we did that a little bit in year one. We made progress in year two. Um, you know, so for for myself, for our staff, um, I, you know, we take pride in the opportunity to continue working towards building and and continuing in you know in the right direction. And um, you know, for that, I'm you know I'm really you know grateful for that opportunity. Uh, number one, uh, myself, my family, we, we love, you know, the the opportunity to be part of the community here in Seattle and to be part of the Kraken organization. Um, and, you know, it's you also, you know, it's exciting to have the opportunity to continue, um, you know, building off of what we did last year. How does the approach change, if any, or how does it differ slightly from, from what you had to face a year ago this summer, just coming off of that season, and now you've yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, we're coming from a different place, um, you know, but the reality is you have to start every year with, you know, with your feet on the ground. Um, you know, everybody starts at zero. Um, you know, for our group, you know, I really tried to leave guys alone here for, you know, for five, six weeks. And now as we've turned into July, I've started, you know, communicating and talking with the guys a little bit more. And um, you know, I really want our guys to have a sense of pride in what they were able to accomplish last year and, and what we, you know, what we were able to build. Um, but also, you know, and I, I sense that, I feel that in, you know, in the conversations with our players. Um, but the other piece that I feel and, you know, the, the part that is, uh, is really important is our, you know, our guys are very disappointed in, you know, in losing game seven in round two. So, you know, that combination, um, you know, my hope is that it brings us into camp with our feet on the ground with, you know, a highly motivated group and, you know, a group that understands each other a little bit better than we did at this time last year. Uh, we understand our formula a little bit better and that's our platform to, you know, to work off of and, and you know, to show advancement this year. Dave, can you give us a little letters, some coaches do phone calls, some coaches assign homework or readings. How are you getting your message through to Yeah, them? no, I mean, there's no, there's no real specific homework to it. It's, uh, you know, it's mostly just good communication. Uh, most of that is done by telephone. Uh, there's texts, you know, me mixed in there, obviously. So, you know, all different forms of communication. But, uh, you know, we've got, you know, we've got guys that are in different time zones, eight, nine hours away. Uh, we've got guys on, you know, East Coast, uh, Midwest. So, um, you know, every player is a little bit different. Um, and as I said, as we came out of, you know, I talked about it at, at, at the end of our year, a year-end meeting less than 48 hours after losing Game 7 is, um, you know, it's one that, uh, you know, in terms of accomplishing a lot, in terms of perspective, um, it's 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 difficult to do. So um, that's why you know you take a few weeks in between and, and now start talking about the dynamics of moving forward into next year. Dave Jared McCann was on a podcast recently, and he talked about after one game, he said, and I went in and I talked to the coaches and I said this to him. And the host, who was a former player, also said, you went in and talked to the coaches. You actually talked to the <coughs> coaches. And so I'm wondering, is that something that you explicitly fostered, uh, that kind of open door? Or is it just something the players knew they could do? You know, well, every, every relationship takes time. And that doesn't happen overnight. And I think that's... Uh, you know, that's one of the things really important that we, we talk about a lot on a daily basis on our staff. If you look at the, you know, the, the members of our staff, you've got great communicators, you've got um, different personalities, um, you know, different backgrounds. Um, and, you know, my, my true belief is, you know, inside of our coaches room, we, we care about, you know, what's happening with our players and how we can connect with them. And, um, you know, I give, you know, I give, that's Leachy, Farley, Dave, you know, Stevie Breer, um, all the way through our staff. That Those guys put a lot of time into working to communicate with guys. We want to have that comfort level. Um, there's a lot of uncomfortable things that happen during a season. 
um, and you have to be able to get right to the heart of the matter. Um, and the only way you can do that is if you have, you know, a good communication pathway with your players and if you have the trust, uh, the two-way trust, uh, to be able to have those conversations. Dave, I know in the off-season players, it's kind of a blend of resting with family time, but also then preparing for the next mm -hmm. season. I'm just kind of curious from your perspective as a coach, how, what that balancing act looks like and kind of what, if anything, you're personally trying to work on next year. Myself personally? Yeah. My, my rhythm, my routine? Yeah. My routine was, you know, I, I got away from things for – you know, probably for 10 days after the season and then immediately dive back in. I have my own routine, whether I'm here in town or, um, you know, back in Minnesota, you know, at our, at our lake cabin. Um, I have my routine where uh, every morning I, I get, a, you know, a couple hours of work done. Um, the thought process is always going at different times. Um, you know, different things happen, you know, depending on the rhythm of the day and depending on, you know, how, uh, you know, how my mind is working that day. Uh, but it's constant. It's a constant process. And then, you know, as I said, it's it's hard to step back and kind of stop the communication. Um, you know, you you want to get going. You want to you want to jump right back to it. But that break, that breather, is really important. It's important for us as a staff. Uh, it's really important for the players. Um, you know, so as a staff, everybody's got their you know their areas that they're working on. Our communication. You know, we met at the draft. Uh, we met at development camp. Um, and, you know, now we'll ramp that communication up as we, you know, as we build the detail for training camp and some of the things that we want to improve on, some of the things that we want to add. So that starts, uh, you know, as a core with myself and with our staff, and then uh, it flows over into communication with the players. David, with the announcement yesterday, I'm sure you heard some congratulations. Are there any that stand out or were particularly memorable to you? Uh, no, it's uh, it's nice to you know it's nice to hear from people. One of the things that you know we had uh, got a lot of Kraken fans around North America, um, and that's you know that's that was that was a fun part of seeing the growth uh, and the presence of of the Kraken in the market here, but also uh, throughout the U.S. throughout Canada. Um, so it's always nice, you know, it's nice to hear from people uh, that are excited about the future. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's, that's where our eyes and focus are on, right? Uh, continuing to grow and build. Um, you know, the only funny one that, uh, that I had was from Gordo. I had talked to Gordo a couple of days ago and, uh, of course I didn't, I mean, I didn't mention it, but I got a, I got a, I got a funny text from him. So it was, uh, it's always, you know, it's good, uh, it's always good to have a good, you know, some good banner back and forth, and uh, for sure there was more of that uh, than last yesterday. Was he chirping you for not telling him? What's that? Was he chirping? I'll you? I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm just, Gord, as you know, you've seen Gordo play, right? So you know, on the ice, he's uh, he's not shy. How do, how do you expect training camp to be different this year? You have a more established team. You're not getting to know everybody, and you've had more yeah. success. <clears throat> a couple different levels. Uh, one is. Uh, our entire staff is returning, uh, so we have a good rhythm. Uh, we have great rapport, uh, you know, in terms of how our staff operates. Um, so that's that's one that's one element that uh, last year we had to grow, you know, and and um, you know we had to become more and more comfortable with uh, you know the routines, rhythms, and roles within that staff throughout not just training camp but you know throughout uh, you know the first portion of the season so this year we're returning our entire staff and I think that's really important I think our staff is um, you know works really well together our staff works hard um, I can't imagine a you know a group of guys to, to work with that work harder than our guys do uh, so we'll be well prepared there I expect the competitiveness of camp uh, to be excellent um, I think everybody saw a noticeable difference in the level of camp last year from year one. I expect that level to, to rise again a little bit this year. Um, one of the things that, you know, that I'm excited to see is some of the competition from the youth within the organization. And we saw a little bit of that last year. You're going to see a continuation of that. So veterans coming back knowing, you know, their, their, uh, their role. Their, their place within the team, but continuing to, to compete, uh, you know, for that role. Um, and then, you know, the continued growth of, uh, uh, of ability and, and young players within our organization um, is going to be something that, 
you know, I believe will be very exciting for everybody to watch and just to see where everybody is at and, um, you know, and how much uh, pressure they can put uh, to become full-time members here. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.